So the side effects that we see associated with daratumumab tend to be fatigue, some count drops. I think you know, we're using it in combination with other therapies, so that plays a role as well. Education for our patient is very important to let them know that they might experience some flu-like symptoms over the next few days. Definitely more tired, especially as they're adjusting to the medication. Otherwise, it's been very well tolerated. Our patients are really disappointed when they have to come off of infusion of daratumumab. The other side effects that we typically see are some of those GI toxicities like nausea and diarrhea, which are well managed with antidiarrheals or antiemetics as needed for patients. I think it's important just to let them know that they have these expectations that they're going to have some of these side effects with that. Count check is very important, especially early on in therapy, to make sure that they're not becoming neutropenic, to add on prophylactic antibiotics as needed. Our experience at our center is pretty much what we see in the data for monoclonal antibodies. We've given so many uh, of these to our patients that it's, this is what we're seeing, the same thing. The same thing with reactions. Our own data pretty much reflects what we see from the clinical trials. Managing side effects with any therapy that, you know, we give to a, a patient with multiple myeloma, you know, we're pretty experienced with all of these therapies, whatever class of drug they're in, whether it's a monoclonal antibody, the immunomodulatory drugs, or with the proteasome inhibitors. So now the, the approved monoclonal antibodies are in combination with immunomodulatory drugs and with proteasome inhibitors, and so we do know what those known side effects are. The side effects of, of the lenalidomide and, or Velcade can um, cause patients to have neutropenia or thrombocytopenia. So we are well aware of that and we know how to handle those by supportive measures. If patients have a low platelet count, we'll give them platelets. If they're neutropenic and their white count is low, then we'll, we'll support them with growth factors. Um, immunomodulatory drugs have other side effects, such as um, if increased risk of a thrombotic event. So all patients should be on anticoagulation if they're receiving lenalidomide and dexamethasone in conjunction with um, in, in monoclonal antibody therapy. Patients who are on daratubumab and Velcade and dexamethasone, Velcade can cause you know, transient thrombocytopenia and neutropenia. So again, we monitor those patients and, and so give them supportive medications when needed. Um, also, these proteasome inhibitors such as bortezomib um, can cause patients to have peripheral neuropathy. So a peripheral neuropathy assessment is important prior to administering um, bortezomib therapy. Also, with the proteasome inhibitors such as you know, bortezomib, um, we know that can cause a reactivation of herpes zoster, so all of our patients are on antiviral medications. And just to decide that all patients, even on monoclonal antibodies, because we are altering the immune system, all of our patients in our practice are also on antiviral medications. So the primary side effect that we see from a drug like elotizumab would be fatigue absolutely fatigue from everything we give. And sometimes fatigue can be very difficult to, and one of the, the, the most hard things that nurses have to deal with in any cancer therapy. So fatigue is a big one. We wanna manage that with making sure the patients, first of all, are not anemic or is there, it's not an underlying cause that we can treat. Uh, we talk about time management, energy management, having an energy bank and when to draw out of that bank and when to put into that bank. Another side effect that we might see is neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. So we'll be monitoring blood counts throughout their therapy and managing that appropriately. Sometimes side effects come from the backbone of therapy as well, from the drugs that we are using in addition to our monoclonal antibodies. And so those are managed according to whatever drug that we're giving per their prescribing information. We might see diarrhea or mild GI side effects. Those are usually not real bad with these therapies though. I find that the toxicities that were reported in the clinical trials have been very consistent with what I see in my patient population. And perhaps even better, uh, some of our patients have commented that the therapy that they're receiving with the monoclonal antibodies is like a, a breath of fresh air compared to some of the previous therapies that they've had. Besides the side effects um, profiles that, you know, 
every clinician should be ready, readily able to manage. Um, there are other warnings and precautions that should be noted uh, for patients receiving, you know, daratumumab therapy. And one of these is very important is the interference of serological testing, which is blood testing. You know, daratumumab binds to CD38, which is on red cells, and this may alter blood typing. So it's very important um, for prior to the first dose of daratumumab that every patient should have blood typing done. And also blood banks need to be aware that a patient is receiving daratumumab or CD38 monoclonal antibody. Because what happens is, is that the CD38 that's on the red cells um, can be interfered with and may result in a positive indirect Coombs test.